What it do, everybody? It's your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on Wheels. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling. Uh, what's good? How everybody doing out there? Appreciate everyone tuning back in to the podcast show. You know what time it is, man. It's not 730. It's 1130. Yo, I'm excited, man. But uh, for everyone who's new to the podcast, man, if you haven't done so already, if you're watching here on YouTube, definitely hit that subscribe button down below, you guys. Yes, hit that subscribe button. It'll do me a huge favor. Like it, comment, share it, and don't forget to follow the 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms, as well as the audio version, you guys, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. Okay, now that's out the way, you guys. All right, man, we're going to be talking some talking some pro wrestling, chatting all things wrestling here on uh, Talk Pro Wrestling on this week's episode, you guys. But I got a really, really cool guest that's joining me on this week's episode. I'm going to bring her on right now. Hello, everyone. It's not a general... Not a general from a general podcast is Universal from the Universal Podcast. How are you guys doing today? Good, good, good. So you said Universal. That's 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 a that's a cool name. I like it. I like it. How, how's everything? How's life treating you? Everything's doing well. I had I enjoyed my Halloween weekend before Halloween, so I'm in great spirits. I'm I'm excited to talk about wrestling. As for um, as for folks, um, my podcast is from everything and everything that goes on the internet and how it affects our lives in IRL, and in real life. And if for folks who see me in the, in the podcast spaces, they know I'm a big fan. I've been a big wrestling fan since I was like nine to eleven nine to eleven years old, and. I catch up with WWE, AEW, um, New Japan sometimes, and a little bit of Impact. But I'm I'm big on wrestling. Okay, okay, okay. That's awesome. That's really, really awesome. Uh, but for my listeners and viewers, though, because uh, it's your first time here uh, on Talk Pro Wrestling here on the podcast, and you was telling everyone how you you know into wrestling, you got into it about uh, around the same time that I did, around about nine years old, about when I was about nine. That's when I got mm-hmm. into it. It was about an attitude early. But tell everyone about yourself and you know who you are. Um, I am a I am universal. I have been doing podcasting for about three years. Um, and also just doing a lot of media work for about eight, nine years. I'm I'm twenty-five. Um I am huge on media and just everything that goes on with that has a story that has a story and there's one thing about wrestling wrestling always has a story either if it's some either if it's something that was it and made to become bigger or something based off a true true story that they tried to um put it out to the world if for the for the greater good or for the not so greater good <laughs> mm-hmm. but i am very excited to be here Okay, okay. I appreciate it a lot. That's going to be awesome. Uh, the links will be down below for everyone that uh, wants to check out Universal Podcast and uh, definitely tap in and subscribe. But you said you are a big wrestling fan. You got around in it about a nine and ten. Uh, what was the moment that sort of, you know, dragged you in? You talked about uh, storytelling and how they tell stories and, you know, it's a big soap proper, you know, to, if you ask me in entertainment, um, Full of entertainment, though. But, yeah, what was the moment that, you know, got you in, into it? Um, The funny story, the funny thing you mentioned it, I always see wrestling as, like, the jocks, like, the jocks um, Broadway. Like, you have to, like, it's the athletes Broadway. The story tell the storytelling it went well when when you bring the char- when you bring the characters together to put in one match it, it's a spectacular night. Um, when I got into wrestling, it was kind of in and out on. It was kind of in and out on 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 being interested in wrestling or not. I always most of the stuff that I'm in I'm into in life is through my brother, and it was around. I would say. 09, 2010, when, um, when WWE was trying to expand more, when NXTs, when NXT first came out, and when N- NXT came out, and John Cena was still the face that runs the plays. <laughs> it like everything was so big and exciting to me. I would watch it every, <laughs> I would watch it every week. 
I get excited. I get excited just for Raw. Hell, I was really excited when Raw went to three hours because I'm like, yes, more wrestling. And <laughs> um, SmackDown <laughs> and SmackDown was. Oh, and I get really excited when I see SmackDown. It it was a really fun time when I I know when I really solidified getting into wrestling was during the um. Not a lot of people talk about this, and it makes me really sad. But um, during the Nexus, the near the Nexus era, that's one of my favorite eras of wrestling. Even though, as much as I love John Cena, his decision that 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 ended their reign still sours me a bit. Despite the fact I will forever love him, but that was a terrible decision. But it was, uh, but that was a solidify. Like God, I just love to hate these people, but they're doing such a fantastic job, and they were rookies at the time. And mm-hmm. like that, that was the where we get to witness Daniel Bryan before he became world renowned Dan- Daniel Bryan or Bryan Danielson as he is now. Um, and just just exciting, just seeing like the exciting or even goofy characters that they would come up with, and also just learning more about what um about those back in the day, like those in the Attitude Era. I used to I um I almost religiously used to watch um. Uh, the match between Mick Foley and The Undertaker, the Hell, what was it, Hell in a Cell, nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, just the seeing that man like crash, crash through the Spanish announce table from the, from the top of that cage is just incredible. When you see two, when you see when you see two in in story maniacs going against each other, it's um in a duel for duel match, monster to monster. It's insane and it's exciting. So yeah, I just love the storytelling of it all. Okay, okay. I think it's interesting though. Uh, so you you got in it around about sort of 2010-ish. Am, am I mm-hmm. right? Okay, yeah, okay, absolutely. cool, cool. And, and and I think it's wonderful to talk to uh, you know, wrestling fans from all around the world, man. Just what made them, you know, really get into it? What was the moment? And like I told you, I, I came into it in the Attitude Era, and you spoke a little bit about how you went back and watched the Mick Foley and Undertaker match. I believe it was King of the Ring, 98, I, I believe 98, 97. Yeah, there it is. I live in which is an iconic moment that Mick Foley and even the Undertaker talk about to this day. Uh, but, you know, coming in at you, the moment that you did and going back to watching all, I guess, the greatness that people always – compare uh wrestling to to this day uh what was your thoughts on you know watching you know the attitude era when when looking back on the attitude era people need to i think people need to understand you got to learn how wwe became the wwe like you got to learn your history the attitude era was just the most defined era of wrestling period to be honest that was when wrestling became has his identity known today if it wasn't for the undertaker the stokos steve austins the Shawn michaels um the triple h's uh, just all all the greats the hulk Ho, the hulk Ho, depending on how you feel about him mm-hmm. um without those people without those people in in like the char- the characters the stories, the 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 behind the scene drama, and even and hell, even with um, Vince McMahon, again, how depending how how you feel about him, he like no matter how you feel about him now or how you feel about him then, that he is a re- he is a genius. Mm-hmm. Comes to the wrestling ring, he is a genius, a genius with <clears throat> a genius interesting morals if you know you know <laughs> but <Yeah>. he's, a <laughs> he's a genius and people and with the attitude era you have to go back and like when you when it comes to these comparisons when it comes to these comparisons um debates that people have I feel like that you have to go through that with eras. You can't like trying to compare it to the attitude era to the attitude adjust, to the um the ruthless aggression the ruthless aggression era or slash the PG era and how people view it or to the current era right now. Those are completely different WWEs. 
Hmm. If you were comparing, if you were comparing, old, like, what was the best? They compare that within those eras. Those eras are not going to be the same. Where we grew, people grow up with those particular, how, how people grow up between those times are going to be completely different. Yeah. You, you, and, you. Yeah, Good. and uh, <laughs> like a prime, a prime Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to be completely different from a prime Brock Lesnar. A prime, uh, a prime Shawn Michaels is going to be completely from a prime Randy Orton. Just comparing the two, it's just comparing the comparing two different, <laughs> two different worlds. Yeah, I, I get you. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely get you though. It, it, comparing it is, I, I guess it's it's not really fair. You know, it was completely it's not two different fair. eras. You know, you you have the golden era, and like I said, you have to go back and, and do your research. And I believe it was around sort of that time. Um, that you it was, it was around about 2013 2014, and as you mentioned, I think NXT when they started doing that, I uh, when the network came out, and I definitely went back and, and watched so much wrestling. Especially, I remember one Christmas, I asked my mom, Can she buy me the uh WrestleMania anthology DVD set? And it had from WrestleMania mm -hmm. one all the way up until WrestleMania 22. And, mm -hmm. And when DVDs was a thing, I, I, I buy you know every WrestleMania DVD set each each Wait, year. Wait, did that also did it also include WrestleMania three? Because I know WrestleMania three has a, has a very it's a very hot button for a lot of OG wrestling fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was like a gold box, and it had like uh like four uh four individual boxes, and it had from like WrestleMania uh. 10 and then WrestleMania, it, it, it had all of them to be honest. We had all of them, so mm -hmm. I went back to, to watch it. And it, like you said, it's not even fair because at that point, it just wrestling was just it was it was pop culture, it was in your face at that point. And then it had a, a period where it did slow down and it picked back up in the 90s. And I think, um, that's what really catapulted wrestling into you know what we sort of see today in a way. Um, mm -hmm. But me, me, me personally, I came in at the in the Attitude Era, and it was The Rock. And you mentioned how your favorite was John Cena, though, and and my guy was The Rock. And I can never forget when both of those guys uh, sort of clashed and came together, and actually had a sort of reunion. Um, yeah, sort recently. Of say, yeah, recently uh, on SmackDown when The Rock uh, popped up, though. So, uh, yeah, wrestling wrestling has always you know been sort of, for me been a part of my life. I think. The storytelling and you know the attitude era was very obviously very fundamental, but you know it's a different time. You know we can't we can't continue. I guess uh, telling people to suck it and you know doing all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. I agree. No, no, I I agree, especially with storytelling. Um, storytelling. Sometimes I tell people who are trying to do storytelling for books or face and such is that sometimes you can look for especially if you're looking for something that this that describes action look at wrestling um I think wrestling is a good example of wanting to analyze an action scene and it doesn't have to be in a ring but it could just be in the in a way where you can just try to um envision what you expect an action scene Will, will play out in words or in 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 um or in description so it can be a visual a visual part mm -hmm. I, I agree. so <sighs> there's so and that's what i said there is so much to wrestling and it just it doesn't have to be just body to body someone wins a belt it is so much more yeah, it is. It is. And I was just talking to um, <clears throat> my commission bros, and, and I had seen that you were on um, my guy uh, Warren Marlowe podcast before chatting with him, buzzing with Marlo. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, great guy. Great guy. Shout out to Warren Marlowe. And uh, the got, American Prodigy. Talking? Yes, yes. <laughs> the American Prodigy. <laughs> the American uh, Prodigy. I'm so happy uh, he's back on. He's, he's back in the ring. Yes, yes, yes. That's he, he love he love it, and 
uh, one, one thing that we were talking about is, and he been, he mentioned uh, was storytelling, and I think that that that's what drive uh, professional wrestling. And talking about so many wrestling promotions that's out there, whether it's WWE or whether it's Impact or you got AEW or so, I think um, WWE has been the forefront in pro wrestling or sports entertainment or whatever you want to call it. And like how you mentioned. Vince McMahon, like as much as you know, all the dirt that's you know come out or is to come out uh, about Vince McMahon, uh, he has been he's been a genius. He bought the company from his father and turned it around and had it to be what three, four, five times more worth than it you know originally was, and to yeah to to, to put storytelling and and these characters in the ring and just mm-hmm. also like how people you know sort of crap on wrestling and oh man i don't understand it well i mean like it's, it's sort of like watching a movie or watching your favorite tv show how people always exactly. sort of uh, uh uh sort of kind of like degrade wrestling in a way but storytelling i think is 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 the best thing and i think that's what wwe especially lately since triple h has taken over and knowing how he goes i think you know we, we starting to see a lot more with that obviously with the bloodline storyline and Cody Rhodes and you know so many so much different stuff right now. Uh, mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on what's your thoughts on on that and, and as well as Triple H, you know, being in creative control and did you sort of imagine? I mean, when I was growing up, uh, I I seen this. I never seen this man sort of leaving WWE or quitting or being <laughs> stepped down. And, and now that Triple H, you know. The, the son prodigal is, is here, you know, even though you thought the, the business would have been sort of handed down to maybe Stephanie or Shane, but hey, that's, no that's that. It, it, it was, it, yeah, I know, right? And, and it was so, but right. Triple H is running things. <clears throat> How you feel about that and just that in general? First and foremost, about time. <laughs> it has been about time that Vince hangs up the belt. Um, I, for the longest I thought like Vince is not going to let anyone touch WWE until the day he dies. That's, that's always been, that's always been the, um, <laughs> the, the, um, the, like what we all thought was going to happen. Mm-hmm. But I, and I can't even say it's just Triple H. I would just say like, I guess, I guess D generation finally, <laughs> Got their hands on, got their hands on, on being part of the table of uh, the table of executives and creatives, which is which is great. And for the most part, for the most part, Triple H is doing a pretty good job. He's making a lot of. Um, when you look at how how things are looking stock wise, when it comes to WWE since Triple H took over, it has has been doing steadily well, not perfect. But steadily well. Um, like WrestleMania this year was really good. It was pretty good. I, the, the, probably the most enter one of the one of the few most enter, uh, recent WrestleManias I've seen. Okay. And from from a grand scale, it looked really good. And Ste- and Stephanie McMahon, um, since she took over the women's division. Women, uh, women's wrestling has never been better. Has never been incredibly better. Um, I wish there was a little bit more. I still kind of wish we still had a little bit more Shane, because Shane just seems like he just like come up, do his little dancey dance, and then <laughs> and, and like probably do a match or two, and then and then sayonara for another for another year or so. But I just hope for we get more more of him. But yeah, Triple H creatively has been doing well. Um, some scales, some scales when it comes to picks. Um, I think um, when it comes to him with some with certain folks, to, uh, um, either coming from naturally from NXT, from there for a couple for at least a few years before they go on to the big route. To the to the big dogs, and then those who are just coming from other promotions gain their popularity. They can like if they're ready, ready, 
at least do NXT for a couple of weeks or at least six months before they go to before they before they jump ship to the big leagues. Okay, so so yeah. you, so you say more so uh, for anybody who uh, comes out of or well, comes from another promotion and comes to WWE, send them to <clears throat> NXT first and get them mm-hmm. ready to be on the main roster. Okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. Yeah, at I least mean, like mm-hmm. at least those who are not. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. At least ahead, some. At least who. Have, like who are like like underdogs who are just start who are just gradually but surely to, like starting off. If they were if they have if they were like a Kenny Omega, no, the, 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 put him put him up to where everyone. No, if it was like a Kenny Omega, then yeah, put him put him in the big dogs, put him in Raw, put him in SmackDown. But that's yeah. um. <laughs> but. But yeah, that's a <laughs> that is a okay. fever dream if it, if <laughs> if it could ever happen again. Okay, okay, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Uh, uh, recently, like um, I think it's Brian Pillman Jr. who came over from NXT. I mean, excuse me, AEW, and now I know he's in NXT. And certain guys, even like AJ Styles, when he came over back in 2015, 2016, actually, mm-hmm. and uh. You know, he skipped the whole uh, NXT process, well as Cody Rhodes, and I'm not too sure what's going on with Jay Cargill, but she made her sort of first televised oh, in-person um, mm-hmm. uh, debut, sort of like, or oh, parents on NXT. So, you know, I, I definitely get what you're saying, because NXT, man, has been, and I've been a, a big fan of NXT. Uh, I remember when they mm-hmm. came here to DC and, you know, supported them in it, and that was the black and gold more so when they were on tour. But NXT has been a, mm. it was a great process for WWE. And like you mentioned, Shawn Michaels is running it and Triple H is running Monday Night Raw. So it's funny how, I guess, we uh, tend to all. Uh, it's funny how we look at wrestling uh, nowadays, though, and never probably would thought that the DX would actually be uh, running the show. Right. Uh, but, uh, how- is, is there anything? Go ahead. What you about to say? I was about to say it's, it's insane how the rebels of the the rebels of a revolution became the executives of for future generations. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, anything about today's wrestling that uh that's that's really got your eye right now? And obviously, we got L.A. Knight that's um on fire. John Cena. You mentioned how John Cena is your favorite. He's back right now. Don't know when Hollywood mm-hmm. is going to be calling him back. Um, Seth Rollins is doing his thing, and we also uh, got the bloodline story is still hanging on. So, anything mm-hmm. that's interesting you, or you know, that's been uh, uh, something that's to talk about. Um. Okay. So, LA Knight was someone I did not expect to be going as hard as he is going right now. I um especially recently when he brought back <laughs> Roman Reigns old stupid <laughs> Looney Tunes <laughs> was it suck it to Dash? Yes, yeah. I, <laughs> I I did not expect him to bring that back and I'm like, oh no, not him bringing back <laughs> his dirty I wouldn't say dirty laundry, but just the, the bad promos. <laughs> yeah, bad but, <laughs> Just bad, but um, but but yeah, LA Knight, LA Knight is killing it right now. I'm very happy for um. I just got into him recently, and he's been doing really good. John Cena, as much as I'm happy that he's back in wrestling, he like, you could see the he. If you've noticed in the last few weeks of him coming back on SmackDown, he has like there's a huge of like change in him like he's very he's smaller he's not he doesn't have the best energy which is understandable like he's been doing this for damn near 20 years at this point and i don't honestly i don't mind if john cena like not fully retire but he beyond deserves the part-time the legendary part-time position where he could just get paid whenever he shows up which i'm pretty sure he does at this point 
<laughs> but it, I'm okay not seeing John Cena as much. If he if he needs to help um pull some uh, pull someone over so they can get where they need to be, that's understandable. That's that's basically he's gonna get paid millions no matter what. And the Hollywood is get you can kind of tell Hollywood is 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 calling for him to come back so they can so they can do another peacemaker. <laughs> So. Yeah, yeah. John, 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 John was my guy. John was my guy, and like, I, like I, you mentioned, the Nexus as well. Uh, twenty ten, where the Nexus took over uh, WWE, and, one of my and, <laughs> and John Cena. Um, yeah, he was all a part of that. And I remember getting my sister into a little bit of it. I remember. I think what John Cena had quit or something, or he got fired. She was so upset though. But yeah, John, John, John is John has always been the guy. He's been doing this longer than I want to say any wrestler consistently. You know, for a while since he went over mm -hmm. to Hollywood, and yeah, I know but... he, yeah, yeah, and I know, I know he got like a, a couple of TV shows, so I know he's going to be leaving soon. You mentioned him uh helping someone out uh he have a match this saturday his first singles match this saturday with one of the bloodline members uh solo sokoa uh how you feel about solo uh in in the old bloodline taking on john cena or at least solo taking on cena not um it's interesting that the bloodline mm. is the way it is right now it's uh <laughs> The bloodline, how I view the bloodline right now is is definitely abusive. Will they won't they are they together? Are they not situation? Yeah. And... <laughs> um, I'm curious. I'm I'm curious how well. Um, so I'm um I'm curious how Solo's gonna do. Uh, but John Cena's condition right now. John Cena, I feel like most likely is gonna pass him over. Is gonna pass him over, or if he really wants to, if he really wants to show that he still got it, he's definitely he'll 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 definitely he could definitely win if he wanted to. In my yeah. opinion, if he <laughs> yeah, really if he wanted, wanted to, <laughs> yeah, if John wanted to, yeah, he will win. Though I think that's that um, because Cena is probably going back off to Hollywood. Uh, mm -hmm. This would be a big, big really big victory for Solo Sokoa and I think this would push his confidence in where he stand within the bloodline um, mm -hmm. Roman Reigns couldn't beat John Cena uh, Jimmy Uso and their tag team match couldn't beat John Cena whether you know couldn't be Cena so I think Solo having this big match at the Crown Jewel um, getting the match done I think he's, this is going to be some of the moment maybe where we can see Solo uh sort of shine though and, and and it also is a reminiscing back to um where cena took on uh umaga back in the day so it's I also the, that you too. know yeah yeah because i used the samoan spike and pan homage to umaga so i think mm -hmm. that's awesome I, I think that's awesome yeah crown jewel is a. Uh, it's going to be cool any any matches you're looking forward to anything that's uh popping out to you that are standing out Crown Jewel, um, Roman in LA. Okay, Roman in LA. A lot Roman of people. Yeah. <laughs> the reason <laughs> why to, um, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just gonna say a lot of people are very interested in uh, this matchup. Uh, a lot of people think it's maybe too soon, or and then you also spoke how you you wouldn't really into LA night. I okay, disagree. Okay. I Mainly I I because. Hear. I disagree because right now LA Knight is coming after Roman's t Roman's tiled of the face that runs the place, in my opinion, because LA Knight has been killing it, killing it, killing it a lot lately, and he mm -hmm. already got the and he already got the cosign. He already pretty much got the cosign of John Cena, which was literally the face that runs the place before Roman. So LA LA Knight is coming after Roman <laughs> pretty hard right now. <laughs> Yes, he is. He, he did something that uh, no person ever done before on SmackDown last week was uh, cut him off on his entrance and sort of 
uh, out showed them basically uh, on, mm-hmm. on, on SmackDown. Uh, so you don't think it's too early right now for Roman Reigns after? I mean, excuse me, LA Knight after everyone that they have put up against Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, Edge, John Cena, Brock Lesnar. Hell, he took on Brock Lesnar a thousand times. Um, you know, so many different people, and with this one hundred, I mean, excuse me, with this one thousand plus day run as champion, do you think? Um, it's too soon that LA Knight get maybe possibly get exposed um, against Roman Reigns, or do you think this is the time to sort of pull the trigger on LA Knight? Because uh, sometimes WWE have a you know shaky time pulling that trigger on what's right though. But since we all Triple H is in control, it may be different though. But I think it's about that time because at this point, LA Knight is a established wrestler. The The WWE universe already know who he is. The wrestling universe already know who he is. He's, he's running in, in many, in many conversations across and across the wrestling community around the world. At this point, I feel like if they don't push him now, when are they going to push him again? Mm. Okay. Like crown, like crown jewel isn't well. Crown jewel, as of recently, as in recent years, has become bigger. Has become bigger in the pay per view tier list of just of importance. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's not going to be like a. It's not going to be a SummerSlam, a WrestleMania, or, um, <clears throat> yeah. TLC, or uh, or um, it or or um, or Money in the Bank. I don't know if I said money big toys, <laughs> but um, he's already established. We are already already established. He already went through the trial the the trial and error wrestlers, and okay. he's he's made it to literally the face that runs the place. I think it's about that time. Um, and plus, to be honest with you, Roman needs to lose. There is so much a big dog can be a big dog. There's there's sometimes being a big dog doesn't mean you're an entertainment dog. Sometimes you are boring at this point. <laughs> like like give us a challenge. You need like sometimes a winner needs to be back to be a challenger to be to grow more again. And yes, mm-hmm. Roman has been around for the longest time since the shield, uh, back and forth with the shield and him going to be solo and then here and now with the bloodline with his with his family. But I love Roman when he was a challenger. Like being a face around the place at this point for the longest time for the last couple of years is getting boring. I want him to be a challenger again. You like have something to push for because there's so much you can like there's so much you can do when you sit on a crown for that long. Mm. Okay, okay. I, I agree with you to some point. I, I, to, to a certain degree, I really do agree with you because I think since over the last couple of months when Jimmy and Jimmy and Jay, well, since Jay left the bloodline and uh, uh, Roman not being there um, that much, it really became a little bit lackluster sort of for that story in a way and you, mm-hmm. you don't know what direction they're going in and, and, and like right. they said before roman and the usos look at man just just we, we we don't know where we're going we just won't take you on to the rap but i think that uh with roman being champion I, I spoke about it uh recently on a recent episode i believe roman reigns got bit by the brock lesnar bug you know, Brock Lesnar was champion, mm-hmm. and but he'll never show up. Yeah, he'll never show up. He'd just be that special attraction. He wouldn't wrestle on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown, mm-hmm. just premium live events. And it's sort of what Roman Reigns is doing now. Like, um, and then with Jay, I mean, excuse me, Jimmy, is, is he in the bloodline, out the bloodline? You don't really know. So it's like, I, I, I kind of do want something different. So I understand this has been the best Roman Reigns, in my opinion, has been the best Roman Reigns ever because it was like you could see through, um, mm-hmm. you could you could see that WWE, at least Vince McMahon, was pushing Roman Reigns uh, to the stratosphere to be the guy, of course, um, yeah. at, at the, you know, in WWE. But I think 
you know, when when you become that too good guy, I guess people start. I don't know. It's an interesting time, and we we mentioned the attitude error as well earlier, and the attitude error. Uh, if if there was a bad guy, you booed the bad guy. If there was a good mm-hmm. guy, you really cheered <laughs> for the good guy. And it's like now in today's era, it's like the fans cheer for basically who they like, and and who they like sometimes becomes the the, the bad guys. The bad guys actually becomes mm-hmm. the people that people resonate more with. You know, like you're supposed to be the bad guy, and you got. 15, 20,000 people cheering you on, and then the good guys come out and they get they get booed. Like it is it's, it's real interesting, and and I think in wrestling as well, we haven't had these established characters um, or, or, or you know stories that we can relate to as well. Whether you're being a good guy or a, a, a bad guy, and I think with Roman Reigns coming out of the Shield. He was. He still had the shield music. He still wore the vest. He still did everything. It was just like, who's this guy? I mean, like we already knew he was the muscle, but what more to him? And I think with mm-hmm. him after COVID, he sort of put something <clears throat> together. And I, you know, it, it been on a run. It been some time though. But uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I say L.A. Knight reminds me of. At the Attitude Era's The Rock and Stone Cold, like they mashed up in the ball and then you go. And a lot of people sort of like, nah, nah, I don't see that. Especially Warren Marlowe, he was like, hell nah, because The Rock and The Rock is my favorite, well as The Rock is his favorite. So he, he definitely wouldn't agree on me on that one. So I was mm-hmm. like, there's something about this guy. Something about this guy is it. But I don't know. I feel like they are either going to pull uh, Stone Cold. Like when Stone Cold took on Bret Hart and uh, at WrestleMania 13, and Stone Cold just passed out. I feel like that's what they're gonna even probably do with LA Knight, try to get the fans behind them even more. Because the way it's going, I mean, I would love for a new champion by now. I mean, especially if you're not gonna show up, and it's looking like he may not right. be at Survivor Series uh, next month as well. So. It, it, I, I don't know, so I, I, I don't know, or, or later on this month actually, so it's just it's, 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 it's crazy so, I, I don't know you, 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 so you got LA Knight winning over Roman Reigns, you feel like it's the right time? Yeah, I think it's the right time at this point, there's so much there's so, there's so much in how long you can be a champion and if um, I can, and if Rome, like Roman at this point I, I, I think if he's pushed as a heel or pushed as a baby face, the fans are just tired of him being champion at this point. Like we need some, we need fresh new blood at this point. And then Roman is kind of running, is kind of running low right now. If he stays champion and it, like a fresh new rush, we need some, we need something that push the, that push more. You can't, we're, it doesn't make sense having something that's called a bloodline and there's no blood pushing. <laughs> the main person, the main person who's who's really pushing for something at this point is Jay Uso. Yeah, yeah, Jay Uso, man, he, he's doing his thing on um, he's doing his thing uh on Monday Night Raw, which I feel like uh, the match that uh. Jay, oh excuse me, it's it's something that's going on, I believe, with Jimmy Uso, or mm-hmm. at least I had this in my mind. But mm-hmm. uh, I believe the matchup between Roman Reigns uh, and LA Knight, I'm pretty sure Jay or Jimmy is going to come down and try to get involved, and Jay is going to, you know, attack them. But it look it's looking like we're going to have a team Jay versus team Jimmy, with you know Raw having. Uh, Adam Pierce and SmackDown now having uh, mm. Nick Aldridge as general manager. So uh, this is an interesting time right now. Real interesting time. How much of a super fan uh, of wrestling are you, or or WWE, whatever promotion you uh, watch the most? How much of a super fan are you? When it comes to WWE, it's at least at least now at this point a good seventy percent. Um, <laughs> like I. Tr- um, if I miss it, if I miss it, I try to like catch up as much as pro- as much as possible. 
Um, outside of the matches, I'm kind of, outside of the matches, I've seen myself more of what's, what's going on backstage on the business side of things, more on, more on what's going on in the ring, like the background drama. Um, I'm a little bit with AEW as well. I'm a, um, getting more into AEW as well, especially since Edge recently crossed over, okay. um, how you feel about that? How you feel about Edge coming over and so he, 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 he feel like a, a WWE guy all the way? So now to right, call him by his right. real name, it's 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 a little awkward though. But yeah, how you feel about him coming over? Yeah, it's a little awkward. Like Edge has been strictly WWE for the longest time, but I get why he decided to to leave. He's he had the the long amazing career WWE. Then he was forced to retire for about eleven years, and then he came back, did his big one for for about three for about two three years, and decided he just wanted to try something new. And AEW that is trying to push for for giving that attitude that 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 attitude back back in wrestling is a, is a good time for him. But I also um so I can so I can see why he wants to look for something different. He wants to look for something new. Um, but I also sort of feel bad for Christian a little bit, so I can understand why he sort of say go fuck yourself, even though those two, <laughs> those two are they're they're like this. They're <laughs> they're they're like this. If 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 they ever get the chance, if they if those two like end up leaving this earth, they're leaving this earth together because they 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 just they're, they're locked like this. And yeah. Christian. Unfortunately, he had to Christian, especially when it comes to WWE, he was kind of treated like the sidekick of uh, the sidekick of Edge half the time, beside being his equal, which sucks. And mm. the and has been going in between WWE if it's if it's Impact, if it's Ring of Honor, if it's AEW, he um, has been trying. He, it's, it's sad that he seemed like he's more respected outside of the WWE and all these other promotions, but not yeah. in the WWE. So seeing yeah. Edge, who is respected and loved everywhere and throughout history of the WWE and coming into his turf where he's the big boss in here. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, be, because I believe WWE came up with these... Uh... WWE had the perception once they broke up, and, and, and it's sort of been this perception sort of throughout wrestling, tag team wrestling uh, in general. It's always you got the guy who's going to be something, and then you got the other guy. You know, we remember yeah. back in the days where Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels, great tag team. I believe they were the yes. Rockers. They, yes. they, they, yes. they, in, in the uh, 80s and the... Uh, early 90s and it was just time for them to move their separate ways and the mm -hmm. iconic uh super kick and sending Marty Jannetty through the barbershop glass and stuff so we knew Sean was the one and Marty Jannetty was the other guy um mm -hmm. same thing with Jeff Hardy and and, 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 and Matt, Hardy. Matt, and Matt Hardy. yeah you know Jeff Hardy went on to do incredible things and everyone loved Jeff Hardy like, he was his entrance the theme song everything you know and Edge and Christian was was, was sort of the same way Edge was uh, the guy who really came out, you know, and stood out, mm -hmm. obviously, what he did post-Edge and Christian. And Christian mm -hmm. just sort of, the perception in WWE, Christian just never had those major opportunities until he sort of left uh, WWE. So, you know, Multitude being in the tag team. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. And being in the tag team, you know, it can, it can go both ways, you know. You, you just don't know, you know. You don't mm -hmm. want to be the other guy, but you know, I, I think it'd be great if both guys, like like Jimmy and Jay, right now. And I mean, Jimmy is doing his thing on SmackDown, but I know Jay is really, really um, having fun and doing his thing. But I, I would like to see the tag team just go off and both of them do their thing, and then both of them be successful. And then you know, if a reunion come to come about, then that's what happens, though. But nine times out of ten. Usually in a tag team in wrestling, it's the other guy, and yes, it seems like uh -huh. Christian in WWE <clears throat> was the other guy. And but coming or being in uh, AEW now, mm -hmm. having the run he's on, 
He's doing amazing. So I, I like AEW. I, I really do. AEW is all right. Mm-hmm. AEW is all right. I, I want to bring back the conversation on the Usos a little bit with, with Jimmy and Jay. Um, since those two have been in a in a tag team for so long, it's gonna be really interesting. It's gonna be really interesting of who who is gonna end up being the big one and who's gonna end up being the other guy if that so happens. Um, because that because because uh, there has been cases where it didn't have to happen, like DX with the with Triple H, with Triple H and Shawn, My- Shawn Michaels. Like yeah, the, they they together they're iconic separately. They're still iconic. Like mm-hmm. no one end up, no one end up being the other guy when it comes to between those two. And it's <clears throat> so. But my thing is with when my thing is with the Usos is that they have been when it comes to when it comes to their wrestling career they have been a tag team longer than they have been individual wrestlers. So to see if they just. So to see if um, if they were, if either one of them or both of them are going to end up being like iconic wrestlers at the end of their career is really hard to hard to say. Um, no matter where where they are right now in the right now in their career, because we can say one is is bigger than the other, but, but months to years gone by, it could be the situation could be completely and utterly different. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're totally right. So. Um, I, th- I think a lot of people were really iffy on the whole Jay and Jimmy. You know, they become this a really, really incredible uh, established tag team. They were tag team champions for a long time, and then when they had them sort of turn mm-hmm. on each other, it was like, ah, man, we don't really want to see them turn on each other. So now that you know, uh, right, and I think. And I, and I think it was a, a, a thing that played into it was because Jay Uso was mm-hmm. getting throughout the whole bloodline. Jay Uso was getting so much praise on just his emotions and his performance, you know, in, mm-hmm. within the bloodline. So I think they wanted to take a chance on maybe you know doing that. Like I said, it's always going to be you know the tag team is not forever, but for some people it is. If you're a tag team wrestler. You're a tag team wrestler, though. But I don't know. Well, maybe we're going to see them come back together uh, down the road. Maybe after a one-on-one match or so. But that's that, man. I, um, you, you mentioned AEW and how uh, Sting. Sting right now is sort of like on this last uh, ride tour, sort of to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, any... any, any um, Thoughts, or maybe who may be Sting's final opponent after seeing Ric Flair show up. Hopefully, that'll be Ric Flair. But after seeing uh, uh, Rick show up just to celebrate Sting, any uh, thoughts on who could be his final opponent? First and foremost, um, that's what. First and foremost, if Sting is, I know Sting says he's retiring, but let me ask: Is he really serious about actually retiring? Because this isn't the first time he said that he was going to retire. And <laughs> Ric Flair is like it is as old as does at this point, and he is still wrestling. And so, no matter no matter if there is a ring, he's gonna wrestle. So that's so like as much as I like, yeah, I'm going to believe Sting saying that, yeah, yeah, he's gonna retire. I need to know if he's actually gonna retire or not because part of me just don't feel like he's actually going to really retire at this point right now. <laughs> In, in I mean, the man is like sixty actual. some years old, so I, I, I hope he does because mm-hmm. Sting had these matches where it's like maybe they they few or far apart, which is totally fine. You right. don't need to be in the ring, you know, every <clears throat> dynamite or so. But the fact that Sting jumping off of uh, the railings and jumping off of going through tables, I'm like, uh, oh, Sting, man, come on, man, be careful, now. Like, you, you know, when you get when you get the second opportunity at it, like. Uh, Mm-hmm. How Sting did, and 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 here in AEW, and a, a lot of other guys and girls. I think you just gotta just you know be be, be mindful. But I don't know who's face his final opponent is going to be. Um, I don't know. I said Chris Jericho for a while, but Chris Jericho's a good pick. Chris uh, Chris Jericho's a really good pick. I think Chris Jericho is a good pick for kind of any person. Like no matter. 
what re- what wrestling promotion there um he's he's in he's a good pick for for someone who's just trying to wrap it up wrap it up and 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 be on their merry way um just some i i i would just want someone who's just like fully established rick rick flair I know some the, because I know some pe and that's some people's head cannons because they're like you have two old people going against you have two old people senior citizens going against each other, respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't know who it's gonna be though, but hopefully uh, it don't be Ric Flair. Yeah, ideally, I, I ideally, if it was I if it I wish it. If it wasn't AEW, it was WWE because I know he's WWE biased no matter what. I would still yeah. want him to be Undertaker. Yeah, that's, that's what I said. Yeah, that's that's my dream. Just like a, a proper, I think that's a proper send off. It would be. It, it would be. I think WrestleMania 31. I mean, it was like everything was sort of lined up. Both of them were in the same company. And it was just like Triple H going to take on Sting at WrestleMania, not the Undertaker. Right. Not the but Undertaker. Undertaker, really? Undertaker took on Bray Wyatt, which was not a bad match and not a bad mm. uh, build up to it, too. You know, rest, God rest uh, his soul, Bray Wyatt, man. But uh, yeah, man, I, it could have been the Undertaker versus Sting. But uh, hey, we will, we will find out one day. Uh, look at uh, Universal, I appreciate you coming through here on uh, the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling uh, mm-hmm. this week. Universal, she got LA Knight winning. Yeah, she thinks he's going to take the, the World Heavyweight Championship or the WWE Universal Championship away we from change, Roman man. Reigns. We need a yeah. change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the triple, uh, the actually one-on-one match between Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins. I feel like Seth Rollins has, you know, I think you know he could take some time away and, and let Drew McIntyre win that though. But we're gonna all find out uh, Saturday. That's gonna at, be a great uh, match. Yeah, really, really great match Saturday at uh, Crown Jewel. Great time here chatting with you on Attitude Era and you know wrestling today and. Uh, LA night and stuff. But before you go, you're the host of the Universal Podcast. Tell everyone where they can catch you at, where they can follow you at, all that great stuff. The Universal Podcast is is streaming wherever you get your podcasts on spot on Spotify, Apple, um, radio <clears throat> radio station, um, and and more. Um, wherever you're getting your podcasts, um, wherever your podcasts around the world. We are here. Um, I'm. I know. Currently, right now, I'm still in my. I'm still what I call my Rihanna era, where I'm taking a long break from podcasts. But I will be coming back soon to bring okay. back to to bring back and share a story of what's going on in the internet and how it affects our lives. All right, all right. Look at Universal. I appreciate you. It was an awesome time having you on. I uh, can't wait till you come back on. You also welcome to come back on and chat more wrestling. This was greatly, greatly fun. Uh, but everyone, man, I appreciate everyone tuning in. Great show. Thank you, Universal. Uh, sit tight. We're gonna chat in just a bit. I thank everyone for tuning in on this week's episode of Talk Pro Wrestling. A live episode is going down this week of Talk Pro Wrestling as well. Uh, follow. WWE Crown Jewel. Um, Try to gather up some some people. We had a nice panel uh, last week's episode of Talk Pro Wrestling, and we're going to give all our thoughts and review and reactions on what went down. Uh, Universal says she got LA Knight, man. A lot of people been uh, debating on this match, man, and I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they're going to do something special with LA Knight. Hopefully so, because a lot of people are really, really behind LA Knight, man. There's a lot going on in wrestling in general but you guys man uh enough of me talking wrestling here this week man i'm gonna see you guys on the next episode for real but before i go don't forget to follow the 1130 podcast on all social media platforms follow the 1130 podcast on a, a tiktok at the 1130 podcast uh follow me on instagram at the 1130 podcast underscore yes underscore also haven't done so this entire episode no wait for man definitely hit that subscribe button down below yes 
best, man. Like it, leave a comment it, and share it, man. For real, it's been a great one. Uh, until next time, man. I hope everyone enjoy themselves and enjoy their weekend. Yo, until next time, it's your man Dre, aka Dre on Wheels, and I'm out, man. <laughs>